Hello one and all, my name is Ryan Bruce, my friends call me Fluff, and today on Riffs, Beards, and Gear, we're gonna talk about the importance of choosing the correct snare for your mix. So when it comes to mixing a tune, I recently had an experience where I got some tracks, I got the drum tracks that were recorded live in the studio, and the drums didn't fit correctly in this song, per my opinion, and the engineer was kind of like, um, the snare might have gone out of tune over the course of the song, and it got kind of weird, and really, in my honest opinion, the snare was tuned way too high for the music that it was being played on. It just really didn't fit well within the context of a mix, and I thought I would kind of go over changing out the snares on a given mix for you guys and kind of explaining how you know when you have the right snare and how how you know when you have the wrong snare. Now, before we go any further, the sponsor of this video is ML Sound Lab, and we are gonna be using ML Drums and the new expansion pack, the Lux expansion pack, and also going over a couple of the features in ML Drums 2.0. However, the crux of this video will be the sound of snare drums, all thoughts and opinions are still mine. Okay, so I have my mix, I am in Logic Pro X, and I have the new ML Drums 2.0 up, and I'm using them, they sound great. Very briefly, the new mixing section allows me to kind of do what I need to do within the, in the plugin itself, as opposed to doing a bunch of external processing. This is gonna save me computing power. And also, this is just gonna add a lot of cohesiveness within the individual drum pieces, right? So new in the 2.0 expansion pack, we have a saturation control, which I am a heavy user of, you know, saturation sprinkled with throughout my mix. So we also have an EQ section for each part of the kit. We have Q control as well as frequency control, and we have parallel compression right here in, in the plugin, which is super, super cool. However, the new Lux expansion pack gives us a whole bunch of snares, Ludwig snares, for example. And if we go in here, we have a bunch of different tunings of a bunch of different snare drums. And they all sound great and they all have their place. However, I think you'll see in a minute that not every snare drum will fit in every single mix. Okay, so before we can start switching out snares, let's hear how I have the mix and how I used ML drums to make my mix big and thick. And I love the snare that I ended up with. However, we're gonna work backwards. And after I'm done playing you this mix, we're gonna switch out the snares and uh, yeah, we're gonna get silly in here. But here's my current mix as it sits right now. Sounds thick, sounds awesome. I love that snare sound. I love the snare sound. So I'm going to open up my instance of ML drums. Now, I know what you're thinking, Fluff, where the rest of the kit go? I have two instances going on of ML drums. I have the snare just on one, and I have a stereo instance of the rest of the kit on a second MIDI track, right? So I just, I just have them split up slightly differently. It's all going to the same bus and, and such. So this is just gonna make it easier for me to kind of zero in on the snare and kind of solo it as I need to a little easier for you guys, all right? So I am in ML Drums. Right now I am using part of the Lux expansion pack and I'm using a Black Beauty 14 inch by six and a half inch tuned to 220 Hertz. That's pretty low, but 
with this low tuned song, it sits very, very well. Now, how does it sound on its own? Notice the snare has a lot of body. There's a lot of low end, but it still has a nice crisp attack. Now, if I switch even just the tuning, let's go to a 294 Hertz. It's gonna up tune it. Now we have a little bit more of a ring going on. How would this sound in the context of our same mix touching nothing else? Is this still gonna cut? Is this still gonna have the weight that the lower tune snare has? Let's see. So you'll notice that it kind of gets swallowed up sonically a little bit, but it has a lot of cut, right? So on the on the real fast parts, the kind of you know blast beaty part at the end, there's a lot of sensitivity in the drum because it's up tuned, and so you can really hear the hits, the ghostier notes of the snare drum. However, when it comes to the big the big chuggy parts, it, it kind of gets lost. And that's just tuning the drum that I eventually settled on for this mix. Now let's go ahead and change out the drum. So this one sounds like this. Now let's go ahead and go to the Black Beauty Dry. Now this is the same drum, just a little drier. Uh, let's go for the 14 uh, uh, with the 6.5 Magic snare. Let's go to the low tuned. A little bit of a ring, some overtones. Let's see how this sounds in the context of a mix. Okay, I feel like this one is cutting the difference between my original Black Beauty snare that I chose from the mix and the higher tuned one. Uh, there's a good amount of crack. I like the overtones that this drum has, however, it doesn't have enough body for me to really cut and give it some weight. Let's go to the Super 14 by five. I'm gonna go with the 220 Hertz tuned. Let's see how this sounds. See, that one's thick, but I suspect it might be too thick. Let's see how this sounds. This one sounds pretty good. This would be a close second for me. Let's try the same drum, but up tuning it just a little bit to 247. I think that might sound pretty good in the context of a mix. Once again, let's see how this sounds. I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I'm just gonna play the first half. Let's see how this sounds with, with all those guitars going on.
See, in the halftime part, I feel like it, it's a little weak. It doesn't have the snap, the sauce, that my original snare, the Black Beauty 14 by 6.5 had. Lastly, let's go to the Super HH. I'm going to start the 233 hertz, and we'll work our way up and see what we think of that. That one sounds pretty good. Let's up tune it just a little bit and see how this fits. Versus. We're pitching it up just slightly. I feel like I'm gonna like this one a little bit better. Now let's go back to my original snare and see how we still feel about it. 220 hertz, low tune boy. Let's try it. What I want you guys to take away from this is before you start going to your limiters, your clipping, your EQ, if you have the chance, really play with the snare samples that you will be using within the context of your mix if you're using a drum sampler or otherwise. This is pretty good. I like the amount of bottom snare it has. However, I will point out if we wanna just go right into our mixer and adjust the amount of bottom snare that we have, I have it actually down a dB. Let's tune that to zero and maybe turn up the saturation just a little bit and let's see, let's see if we can get a little bit more crack while generally having the same amount of consistency that we have with this drum. Sounds really good to me. The bottom snare is where your cut is gonna come from, right? The top is gonna be a lot of body. The bottom is going to be all of your cut and that is going to take you much further than just grabbing an EQ and then just you know starting to turn knobs. Dial in your actual snare drum first and then add to it and accentuate it and help it with the tools that you have at your disposal. ML Drums 2.0 and the Lux Expansion Pack, I will link down below in the description. And with that, you've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.